My name is Rosibel Ochoa and I am the Executive Director of the Von Liebig Entrepreneurism Center at UC San Diego. We have worked with more than 500 technologies in the past 10 years across different technology sectors. And we have mentored more than 200 professors, researchers and students through this commercialization process. We have invested more than $5 million in uh, grants to support graduate students to work in the lab and build these functional prototypes. We have 12 what we call business advisors, and these are seasoned entrepreneurs that understand what it takes to take technology to the market, but they also understand the academic environment. So they serve as a bridge between the university and the private sector. The second component is the, our ability in the past of provide GAP funding enough for a professor or a student to build a functional prototype that they risk the technology from the perspective of an investor or an entrepreneur. And this exceptional project management capacity that we have and that we have perfected in the last 10 years that really allows us to move these programs and the projects forward in a very uh, targeted and focused way. So to, we leverage all these resources very effectively and that's what makes us successful. You know, it's a fabulous opportunity. We were approached by the California Healthcare Foundation and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We've had a really long-standing relationship with, and the, the knowledge of UCSD and how much you've done for the community, as well as us having a large presence in San Diego seemed to be a perfect match. So we are really thrilled to be part of the program. You know, when I think about the center and being able to mold um, engineering with medical science and business acumen, you know, that is really what we need to do. We need to be able to bring not only the academic centers together, but then also our public and private stakeholders to be able to help accelerate and get these ideas out to the marketplace. So, um, you know, absolutely, I think this is uh, just, this is a testament to what can be done in a very short amount of time. And um, I think I've said that before, but that's, that's a, it's just a great way of being able to bring these different stakeholders together to be able to demonstrate success. One of the real strengths of the HTAP program was the fact that the program matched experienced mentors, people who had built companies and taken them out into the market with the university-based research teams. So really giving those teams access to people who'd been there, done it, and gone through all the stages from commercializing the product to raising money, I think is a hugely valuable asset. And it's a piece that I think Von Liebig Center in putting this program together uh, has, has really led the way uh, to show others how important this mentoring piece can be in an incubator and accelerator program. We were very interested when we put the call out in conjunction with our partners, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and Booz Allen. Um, we were excited to see the interest in chronic disease and some of the, the areas of interest for the foundations obesity, diabetes, cancer, a number of the chronic diseases where access to care and cost of care are huge problems for low-income populations. So seeing these researchers ta tackle and work on those problems with an eye towards developing affordable solutions was really encouraging. So I'll uh, tell you more about what we've done um, over the last uh, year or so about uh, the development of a cost-effective platform for uh, specifically blood analysis on a cell phone. So digital diagnosis is the theme of my research lab at UCLA. We literally uh, use computation to simplify microscopy, microanalysis tools so that we can attach devices uh, to the back of a cell phone that can conduct microscopy, microanalysis, cytometry, uh, and diagnostic test reading. The Von Liebig Center uh, and what it does uh, is quite unique. Um, and I haven't seen the same uh, model implemented in uh, other UC campuses or other institutions in California, it tries to catalyze the uh, uh, transformation of the or the translation of the technology from uh, the lab uh, of an academic institution 
uh, into uh, the real use uh, case, specifically for, uh, again, the stakeholders in California. Yeah, I mean, the, the selection of the advisors are very important, obviously. They should be able to um, talk a broad spectrum of languages. Uh, not literally languages, but in terms of communicating uh, within, uh, uh, within uh, the project team uh, and uh, uh, the other, uh, again, stakeholders uh, in terms of their needs. So I think their background uh, should have a strong flavor of business, but they should also be uh, technology-wise uh, uh, kind of uh, with their feet on the ground so that they can interact with us. I think that it is absolutely um, a great model uh, and uh, it should be adaptable and scalable. Uh, needs the right uh, uh, the ear of the right agencies at the right time in, the, in this country to, uh, to take it up and, and, and run with it. Yes, the concept is if you can apply a drop of blood and then the blood will run through our electronic assays and do the same molecular quantifications, then we can directly interface these two electronics gadgets because this is itself is a semiconductor chip. We don't need to worry about any optics. Okay. So you can use your cell phone as your reader, reader, you can use your laptop as a reader, you can use any electronic gadgets around you. Of course, we save a lot of blood. It's much less invasive. So this is the idea how we can save costs and actually increase the, the throughput of the assay. So essentially it's a semiconductor electronic backbone. The same technology you use to make microprocessors and Intel and IBM, but then we can apply very essential, essentially the same similar technology. We do certain kind of surface chemical functionalization, some special device design, and then we can allow these to do the blood diagnostics. Um, I think the way that this program has been conducted from management's perspective, I think it is awesome. So I think on one hand is, uh, is give the researcher or technologists a lot of freedom to pursue whatever the interest of, because obviously they have the first hands-on uh, uh, most intimate knowledge about the technology what it needs to commercialize but on the other hand I think your program and especially our advisors are very helpful in bringing the commercialization perspective from the respective domain for instance the diagnostic technology I'm working on I'm getting a lot of advisors from your advisors in the sense that well what is really the uh, uh, need market strategy. Not so much about only data, but also the, the mindset and also the strategy to go after, talk to people. I think they're very, very uh, well managed. I think it is, on the other hand, is the, the visibility, or at least uh, put us into the place that we can uh, get our technology exposed to different people. Because as a researcher in university, our exposure of the technology is mostly through publications. But publication is not usually read by the investors in general. And uh, of course, through this program, uh, we will bring our technology to a wider scope of audience, especially those who have money in general. So which is, I think it is actually very, uh, very important. And this is not something that through other conventional existing channel is able to do that. Every one of these technologies comes with, a, with obviously with a different individual or a different leader or a different team. And um, uh, as a, uh, I'm also an angel investor here in the community with Tech Coast Angels, and so I always look at these technologies from the standpoint of what is the angel investor going to look for, because uh, that's actually the most important thing. Our project deals with the uh, management, self-management of chronic mental health problems through mobile. Uh, technology, so we've developed a software platform to deliver kind of just-in-time interventions to people uh, to help them manage their illnesses. As a as a clinical researcher, uh, my main focus has not been on on commercialization. So the the grant, uh, both in terms of the funding, in terms of extending the product, and also receiving mentorship uh, from uh, several different advisors here uh, has really helped me to sort of think about how we can uh, take this technology and, and make it into a commercial product. I think the mentorship has been tremendous. I think even before the, the, the grant was awarded in terms of shaping it and trying to think about uh, these kinds of projects from a different lens. I'm a clinician and I'm not uh, trained in, in any of the ideas around building a, a business and I thought of commercialization as really a way that people 
made money. And in a sense, it's really actually, for me anyway, a, a different way to try to get these products out there. And I think that's, uh, that's been eye-opening and sort of how to think about developing interventions that are not just effective, but are ones that people will actually use in the real world. Universities, by their very nature and by the nature of the way we fund research, are very much silos. And people get very good in their area, and they really don't look across the whole portfolio of technologies. Advisors in a place like Von Liebig or any of the other commercialization centers that are floating around out there have the opportunity to look at the whole portfolio of technologies and say, hey, maybe that and that one will work together. And that's what we did in this case. What happens when you get into the, uh, in the BMI category of 30 and above, which is obese and above, um, a couple of things happen. The ghrelin level doesn't do this up-down thing. It just kind of stays up here. Your body's always producing it. And as a consequence, uh, many people who are obese, uh, particularly in the 35 and above category, the morbidly obese, those people, literally their brain is going, I'm hungry, feed me. I'm hungry, feed me. And in fact, if you don't change the behaviors, it, you're, you're not going to have any long-term success. About a third of people who go through bat, uh, gastric bypass surgery, I'm not talking about the lap band thing. I mean, this is where they you know, take your stomach and make it into a tennis ball. A third of those people gain all the weight back within three years. So changing behavior uh, is, is critically important, and that's what we're about. We, change your behavior, and we teach you to slow down your rate of eating. If you can slow down your rate of eating, you'll lose weight. Um, and, and that's what we do using our technology. We did not have the funds to both uh, expand our clinical practice and commercialize the, uh, the, the weight loss technology to, to reach the maximum number of, uh, of people that can be helped by it. So without this grant, we really wouldn't have been able to, uh, to dig into the programming and some of the hardware design that we needed to do. But the other part is, is the personal advisor. We've been working with Mary Zoller. And just having someone that I can go to and bounce ideas off of and get the introductions that she has and that the Von Liebig Center has, uh, the connections in, in the community, that's a great benefit. I've done quite a number of startups. I've been an angel investor and have also been with the Von Liebig Center for 12 years. So it's, you know, it's, it's an enjoyable thing to watch people succeed on their own merits and to give some support to that. I find that the faculty and graduate students are highly motivated, highly intelligent, obviously, and um, driven to success. So it's a pleasure to work with them. NIH or NSF does not offer this kind of uh, opportunities to fund this type of research to support the transferring of uh, our research uh, to commercialization. So this is a very good opportunity for us. It was very difficult for us to find a seminar funding opportunity to support this kind of research. We think it is very important. Maybe uh, the most important part of our work is to uh, change the world, to leave some positive impact on the world using our research. So this kind of grant uh, opportunity is perfect for that kind of uh, work. <laughs>